Howdy folks, this is Team Punk Desperado. Back again, this time my topic is history. We're going to be talking about a very fascinating place that a lot of people probably don't know exists uh, on the Gulf Shores of Alabama called Historic Fort Morgan. <laughs> decided to pick this topic? Well, it's because Mrs. Desperado and I were able to visit this site just a few days ago uh, when we were on vacation on the Gulf Shores of Alabama. And you know, we're Westerners, so we really were very familiar with that area. But some friends of ours were having a kind of get-together in a nice sunny, uh, sunny southern clime. But, of course, we wanted to see something historical. Uh, every time we do this, we always uh, go on a little sojourn of our own. Last year, when we, the previous year when we were in Key, Key West, we did a little visit to the historical home of Ernest Hemingway, which was very fascinating. A lot of cats. Uh, but get back to that some other time, perhaps. Now, the Gulf Shores is on that little bit of land that is the Alabama coast. You know, Florida kind of hogged it all. <laughs> and uh, and there's this little notch down there where Alabama uh, contacts the water. And so they a little bit, have a bit of a tourist area there uh, called uh, Gulf Shores or Orange Beach. And the fort itself is out on Mobile Point, which is down this little spit of land, this little peninsula. And you drive all the way, you drive like 20 miles on this road that's basically got water on either side of it although you can't see it from very much because there's so many trees. And there's a lot of vacation homes and stuff like down there, but when you get to the very end, you can't miss it because the very end is Fort Morgan. And it's this uh, basically brick masonry fort. Very interesting, very fascinating. It's 200 years old, so it's definitely something that anybody who likes history needs to see. Now, of course, I believe that history should be celebrated and should be remembered whatever your politics are. You know, and a lot of people, they're really down on the Confederacy and so on because of that slavery stuff. I don't care. The, the point is it's part of our history and we need to know about it. We need to be informed. And no matter what mistakes this country has made, it's still our country. And so I am definitely not one of those who believes that statues should ever be taken down, uh, including in Russia. I think they should have left Lenin statues up. It definitely should have. you got to remember that stuff. It shouldn't be forgotten. So anyway, Fort Morgan was a Confederate fort for a time, and it was involved in one of the most important battles of the Civil War, the uh, Battle of Mobile. And also before that, it was involved in the War of 1812. And anyway, this, this uh, bit of the coast, bit of the Alabama coast, uh, there's a long peninsula that juts out into the water, and it separates uh, Mobile Bay, which is to the north, and the Gulf to the south. And this fort is at the very, very tip, so if you just keep driving, you just keep driving on the road west, you can't miss it, because if you go any further, you're in the water. And it, at first it looked kind of unprepossessing. You go out there and you see a little visitor center, and it's a little round brick place, and you know, and it's, it's cool. It's got a lot of old photos and artifacts, which I always like to see. So it, it doesn't look like much from the road, but you come out and, the, and you realize that there's these there's these brick walls kind of supporting this this uh, earth fortifications, and you can walk through these little tunnels into this green space in between, which I can imagine the troops drilling and, and uh, having their assemblies back in the day. And you go in between, and, and the, the architecture is very cool. They have all these arches, and it looks very Spanish, which is appropriate, I guess, because the Spanish used to rule this area before the Americans did. And uh, you, you look through, and, and there's all these little rooms that are dark, <laughs> and uh, there were a lot of children running around with their families and kind of running around and playing hide-and-seek and yelling and so on. Uh, but what I found the most fascinating was all the cannons, and there was... Uh, cannon of various types uh, from various eras. The uh, originals 
There were some from the Civil War, some civil, some Confederate cannons, some Union cannons, and some that were put in later uh, during the Spanish-American War when they refurbished the fort and used it for a while again. To go back a little bit about the history, it started out as an earthen fort called Fort Bowyer, and it was it was totally, you know, totally earth-type fortifications and with stockades, you know, wood built of wood and so on, and this was, this played a, an important role in the War of 1812 in which the British attacked and first time the Americans repelled it, the second time the Royal Marines took it over with the uh, aid of the Greek Indians, and of course the British had to give it back because after the war, you know, after the peace, you know, they had to leave us alone. <laughs> the Americans decided to make it into a proper uh, masonry fort and they started construction of Fort Morgan, which was named after the Revolutionary War hero Daniel Morgan. And it started in, 18, in 1819 and it took quite a while to finish. It wasn't really finished until 1834. And as the website notes, there was some slave labor involved. And so I guess that means we have to tear it down, right? <laughs> no, of course not. That's silly. Uh, but it's, uh, it's very impressive and for the time it's it's a sturdy though the brick construction it's it's lasted quite a while there was some damage of course in the hurricanes which they still haven't repaired yet but you can see a lot you can walk up and down the stairs you can go up on the on the ramparts basically and see the bay you can see ships sailing in and in and out uh, between the straits uh, between the shipping channel uh, to Mobile um, a very important port on the other side of the, that narrow channel, another narrow piece of land called Dolph Dauphin, uh, Dauphin Island, which in French means dolphin, and there's another fort right on the other tip. They kind of guard it like twins. That one's called Fort Gaines. We did not have a chance to visit it, but they are both historical sites maintained by the state of Alabama. They're at the site, the, on the web it says they've been nominated for national historical sites. I don't know why they wouldn't be uh, included in the list because they are definitely worth seeing. Now the most interesting story involving uh, Fort Morgan was the Battle of, of, of Mobile Bay uh, during the Civil War and this is uh, where one of my one of my heroes, uh, Ad Admiral David Farragut, he he said, damn the torpedoes, full speed ahead! <laughs> and I just I love that saying and I love his, the man's attitude. Farragut was a great man, and and uh, I have actually written brief blog posts about him and and his his uh, famous quote. At the time, what happened is, as Admiral Farragut, he took his ships into the bay. You know, they got past the Confederate guns, and they took over a couple of towns in Alabama, including Selma. You may recognize that name, and and then they went and basically took over Fort Gaines on the other side. They, they pretty much blasted it and took it over. And then they had to besiege the more well-defended Fort Morgan. And that took a couple weeks. But eventually, eventually they did succeed. And from then on it became a Union stronghold that was used to help blockade the South and to keep them from you know, getting shipments of weapons or other reinforcements. You know, to, and it helped end the war. In any case, the Fort Morgan is very fascinating. Uh, the price is reasonable. Uh, it's like eight dollars for more for the average person, uh, less for seniors and kids. And so it's it's a it's a cool place to visit, a uh, uh, place where kids like to run around and yell. Although the, some of the stairways are a little bit treacherous, as you can climb up to the um, ramparts and, and see the bay. A very, very fascinating view. One more story and one more page in the history of of uh, Fort Morgan I have to mention is that it was abandoned for a while after 1870 and then they decided and the administration of Grover Cleveland in the late 1800s they decided to re renovate it and make it an actual usable fort. And during the Spanish-American War in 1898 it was an active fort and and although, of course, the Spanish had no means of attacking the U.S. mainland, 
uh, they did, I mean at least the Americans did, you know, use some of these forts on, in the south as staging grounds for operations on Cuba. I'm not, I'm not sure about Fort Morgan, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised. I know they had a lot of the troops training in Florida where they all got malaria. <laughs> and it was probably, you know, malaria was probably a worse uh, enemy than the actual Spanish. And so, anyway, after that, uh, it was an uh, active fort for a while until the First World War, which in, in 1917, they took out the cannon and, you know, shipped them uh, to be used in Europe in the war against Germany. So, so that basically ended the military career of Fort Morgan, but it's still a fascinating place with, uh, with some very cool fortifications that have withstood the test of time, despite some damage from the recent hurricanes, and they're there to see, and I highly recommend you visit them if you have the chance. So this is the Steampunk Desperado saying thanks for watching this. Let me know what you think in the comments below if you actually like these historical things. I'm going to alternate these, put these in occasionally as a little bit of a change from my talk about steampunk and other science fiction. Uh, I may also do uh, some about local attractions here in Arizona. We occasionally go and visit places like Tombstone and there's some pretty interesting things to see there. Uh, so please like and subscribe. It helps us get out the good steampunk world word and also support the uh, learning and remembrance of history, especially American history, because we do need to remember our heritage and remember who we are. For now, this is Steampunk Desperado saying, adios amigos from the Steampunk Desperado channel, where the past meets the future and the present is extraordinary.